Well, this was the most basic behavior of ACES, but this will really change how you color grade because you'll feel more comfortable pushing the image in different ways. Hi, I'm Alex Jordan from Long Color Grading and Filmsimplified.com. And did you know that ACES uh, gives you more than simply a color management system? It can make the process of reaching cinematic colors um, a bit easier. Let's take a look. In Resolve, you can set a different color management systems for each timeline. So in order to compare the colors from ACES, you know, to uh, the standard, you know, YRGB colors, we're going to be duplicating the timeline and we're going to be setting a different color, at least one of the timelines, you know, with, with ACES. So in order to find this timeline in the media pool, I'm simply going to go to timeline, scroll to the bottom, find current timeline in media pool. And this is the current timeline. I'm simply going to hit command and C, then command and V to copy the timeline. And I'm going to double click on this one and call this one ACES. So now we have two copies of the timeline. And now let's set up this one to use ACES. So I'll right click on the timeline, go to timelines and timeline settings. I'm going to uncheck use project settings. So this will decouple the settings of this particular timeline from the project. And I'm going to go to color. And here I'm going to set this timeline to use ACES. So the color science, I'm going to switch it to ACES CCT. And uh, here, this might seem a bit confusing. However, there's only one setting you need to change here which is the ACES output transform. I'm going to click here and select Rec 709. And before I hit uh, OK, let's just explain what's happening. Just in order for this not to be very confusing, now I have another video uh, that I created earlier that describes a, uh, what a color management system is. So ACES is simply a color management system. Great. What's a color management system? Uh, in very simple terms, let's say you have a timeline and the timeline has many different clips for, coming from many different cameras. So you have, for example, uh, clip A coming from a Sony using S-Log, for example, and clip B is coming from a Canon using like log, uh, C log or something. What you can basically do is to set up a color management system, which is basically what we did. The word set up a color management system might seem a bit confusing and scary. However, all that's required is just you come to color here and selecting ACES CCT and then selecting Rec 709. And now you can simply call these simple clicks that you made uh, setting a color management, setting up a color management system just to make it sound, you know, more impressive. What's happening here is that you can simply tell Resolve now that, hey, listen, this clip is coming from a Sony it's using this uh, particular color space and this uh, clip is coming from a Canon for example this is coming from an ARRI you also need to tell Resolve what color space will the display monitor be, will be using so basically you'll tell Resolve listen this will be displayed on a monitor that uses Rec 709 and Resolve will do its magic in the background color correcting everything and matching the colors you know to you know, to fit the color space of the monitor. So this will make your life much easier because you don't have to deal with different color spaces, um, at least in theory. It, it never works 100%, but I mean, theoretically, that it just makes your life much easier. So what's happening here is that basically I selected um, the color science to be ACES, and then the only option I changed was the ACES output transform, which in other terms telling ACES what kind of monitor are we going to be using. So I just told it um, we're going to be displaying this on a monitor that uses the Rec 709 color space. This might seem a bit confusing, but in 99.9% .9 of the cases, you will be using um, Rec 709. So it's pretty simple just to use Rec 709 all the time. Unless you know what you're doing, then you don't need to use Rec 709. And then I'm going to hit OK. So now we set up this timeline to use the ACES color space. Speaking of Resolve, if you're a beginner and you're interested in learning how to use Resolve, you'll love our free crash course that will teach you the basics of every tab in Resolve. Simply go to filmsimplified.com and sign up for free. Then I'm going to double click on this timeline to name it and call this Rec. 709, great. The next step is to simply click on ACES and basically tell Resolve what kind of cameras are we using here. So I'm going to switch to the color tab and now I'm going to simply tell Resolve what color space each of these clips are using. I know that uh, this was uh, shot using Sony, uh, I guess that's log two. So we'll just simply go to H's input transform. And uh, here we have Sony and we can say S log two. Great, notice how the colors uh, have been corrected a bit. They're not absolutely perfect, but the colors look a bit better. Now. Then I'm going to do the same for this. This was also ACES transform and I'm going to go to Sony S log two. And this was with Sony S log one. So I'm going to switch to Sony and S log one. Great. So at this point, we simply finished the setup. 
that's all we needed to do in order to work with ACES. Now let's start comparing how ACES behaves in a different way than the standard flavor, at least of YRGB. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be switching between the timelines. Notice that using this drop down menu at the top, I can switch between this timeline and this timeline. So I'm going to switch to the Rec 709 timeline and maybe just correct the image a bit. I'll simply open scopes here. I'll correct the image a bit, maybe just bring gamma down and increase saturation a bit and we just you know it's basic corrections and I'm going to add a new node so now let's start comparing the colors you know checking how ASUS behaves in a different way than YRGB so I'm going to start by controlling offset and notice the scopes so now we're in rec 709 I'm going to control offset so I'll increase offset and reduce offset and keep your eyes on the scopes here notice that the image or the different brightness values in the image move in tandem so basically they move as one value up or down, which is what you'd expect. However, there is a small problem here. Notice the bottom of the scopes. Note that when I bring offset down, I'm actually clipping information. So basically if the scopes representation here goes below a particular point, like this bottom line, for example, and you cannot see it anymore, this means that it's outside the color space, so it's clipped, which simply means that we lost information in shadows. And if you look at the top here, if I move the offset to the top, I'm also losing information in highlights. Let's reset offset and switch now to ACES. And now let's repeat the same thing. I'm simply going to control offset to the top and notice what's happening. This looks more like controlling gamma than controlling offset. So if I bring it down, notice that ACES is trying to protect the shadows. I'm going to reduce offset even more and notice that what's happening here is that it's trying to mimic how our eyes work because the human eye simply tries to protect information in shadows and in highlights. It, it, it basically, information don't go from existing to not existing. Basically, what's happening with the human eye when you look at something dark is that the dark parts are actually compressed. You don't lose information. The thing, things simply become more mushy or become more compressed pressed with our in shadows and highlights. So take a look at the shadows here, how we're compressing shadows, but ACES is trying to make us not lose any information. And the same is true for highlights. Keep your eyes on highlights here. So if I increase highlights, notice how ACES is trying not to lose any information in highlights. It's compressing the image. So we're not losing information. Let's switch back to Rec 709 and do the same with offset and notice how we're losing information in highlights. And if I switch back to ACES, notice how we're protecting the highlights. This behavior spills to all the other controls, basically making your color adjustments uh, mimic how the human eyes work, not how the computers see colors. So, for example, let's reset the uh, primary controls here, and I'm going to bring lift down. Notice how lift is also trying to protect shadows. Take a look at here at the bottom of the scopes when I uh, control lift, and I'm going to control gain, and again, we're compressing highlights and compressing shadows. And this looks way more natural than the behavior of YRGB. So I'll just uh, switch to Rec 709, reset, and I'm going to bring lift down and notice how we started losing information really fast. Take a look at the dark areas here in the image. And then I'm going to do the same for highlights and we're losing information in highlights. Let's switch back to ACES and notice how much more natural the colors look. Well, this was the most basic behavior of ACES, but this will really change how you color grade because you'll feel more comfortable pushing the image in different ways while you feel that the image will be protected or actually the highlights and shadows will be protected, uh, which will make your color adjustments a bit more daring. <laughs> I say. Uh, so that's something to try. Now, that's the effect on luminance. Now, let's take a look at ACES effects on colors. Again, I'll switch to Rec 709 and maybe I'll um, reset this. So, in order to mimic the ACES behavior, I'm going to bring gamma down and I'm going to bring gain up a bit. Yeah, and increase saturation. Now, I'm going to add a new node, so option and S, and I'm simply going to take offsets towards yellow. So I'm going to drag offset towards yellow and take a look at the colors. Now, I will switch to ACES, add a new node, so the same behavior, and I'm going to drag the colors towards yellow. 
and take let's just basically park both images on the same frame so i'll get this one here go switch back to rec 709 get it here and let's compare both images so this is how the colors look after the adjustment when using the rec 709 yrgb and i'll switch to aces and notice how the colors look way more natural so again rec 709 Take a look at the colors and ACES. Not to say that you cannot achieve the same colors using YRGB, for example. However, what ACES allows you to do is to achieve the colors you want with very minimal adjustments. And this will always make your color look more cinematic and better. So go experiment with ACES. I'm sure you're going to be really pleased with the colors you achieve. Now, uh, again, uh, setting up ACES might seem like uh, a daunting task. However, it's, it's really pretty simple. All you need to do is to simply go to the timeline, right click, timeline settings and uh, uncouple the settings of the timeline from the project settings by simply clicking here, uh, going to color, selecting ACES. And the only thing you need to choose is to select Rec 709 here and you're done. And when someone asks you, you can say that, hey, I set up an ACES workflow. The last thing that we need to talk about is what if you do not know the color space that we use to film a particular piece of footage. So for example, I know that this was filmed using S-Log uh, 2, I guess it was a Sony something. Uh, however, let's say that we'll just go to ACES and go back into project, so no input, transform, because you don't know what kind of camera was used to film this particular piece of footage. So again, right click, input, transform, no input, transform, which is you basically telling Resolve, hey, I really don't know what camera or what format was this shot in well it's pretty simple you can color correct things manually but just keep in mind that uh, auto color will not work so if you try for example to click on auto color it, for the most part it will not work out of the gate because of mismatch in, in how resolve work versus how aces work but in order to fix that after hitting auto color all you need to do is to bring gamma down a bit and maybe gain up a bit and this will basically correct the colors uh, as much as possible just keep in mind that after using auto color to bring the gamma down a bit uh, as it will help a lot with making the colors look more natural so i hope this was helpful if it was helpful please visit us at filmsimplified.com where you can join our free DaVinci Resolve crash course that is designed for the absolute beginner and will take you through every tab in Resolve. Thank you. Filmsimplified.com